important aspect is to find out the opportunity in the Rajasthan and see the how much challenges we are facing either we are talking about the financial aspects or we are talking about the technical aspects or we are talking about the marketing availability of the raw materials so forth so on Mr. Ajay and Mr. Shah informed you the importance of the SME sector when we are talking about in India we are having 65 million SME sector which they constitutes highest employment after the agriculture as you talk about the export growth or talk about the GDP they are playing important role Rajasthan is also playing important role in respect of GDP growth for industry and service sector it is about 65 percent of the GDP coming from this sector and major respect when we are talking about the opportunity so Rajasthan is very famous for the mineral we are having a cement industry we have a stone industry we have agriculture based industries we are talking about the jewelry we are talking about the gems there is a lot scope for that like a major aspect is what are the challenges either you talk about the financial challenges talk about the marketing challenges or technology major aspect of the technology which require a proper attention for that when we are talking about the financial aspect financial challenging to on the resurgent India banners or banner of our associations for the financial advisors I hold about 130 webinar different subject SME was the major subject for that in our webinar we are talking about the financial aspects we are never talk about the marketing we never talk about the demand when we are talking about the financial aspects madam is here who is the helm of hair of the industries to be going to deliver all the challenges in respect of the financial aspects or the innovations of the technology aspects also looking in a regulation address I want to tell you very clearly how SME are facing the problem in respect of the financial aspect just now I am talking to one of the leading bank sitting here so he was telling me the entrepreneur is very good industry cannot go st stress due to the promoters promoter are very good then what is the problem problem is whether the problem is infrastructure or whether the problem is the finance or problem is somebody else that we were going to discuss in this webinar I feel the finding of the webinar finding of our session must place before the state government for its rectifications I remember that last two three years back okay so when I am addressing this so there was a demand from Mr. Jain that there should be a credit card for the SME sector also so I want to touch the financial aspect for the financial difficulties because as on 28th February 20 if there is no outstanding no credit can be given to the party so for a new entrepreneur it is very difficult 
So all the aspects, as I want to touch all the aspects, like and still shortage of time is there. So I've been advised to conclude at the earliest. So my only point will be we'll discuss in the session, next session, what type of challenges SME sector are facing and what is the way forward. Whether you're talking about the restructure of the account, whether you're talking about the finance availability, whether you're talking about the assessment of the limits. Because assessment of limit is also an important aspect. Because during COVID period, the sale factor had come down. When sales had come down, the while processing the proposal, bank is asking, your projection, you cannot achieve it. All limits are being assessed on the basis of the projected sale. So that is a major issue. So how it can be tackled? I think detail we will discuss in the session. And uh, I request the FIKI that they should uh, come out with the white paper. Let it should go to the government. Let they can also consider to the Reserve Bank also. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gupta, for your kind words and also your advice for producing the white paper and so forth. I think all our delegates will be happy to meet you in the interaction which will follow. Now we come to Dr. K.L. Jain, the famous personality of Jaipur. He is uh, the member of Fiki Rajasthan State Council, Honorary Secretary General of the Rajasthan Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, an organization which jointly with the Swiss Agency for Development has uh, done a lot of work in the MSME sector in 19 clusters in Rajasthan. They have done a lot of work in the uh, field of gems and jewelry, hand block printing, especially using the natural dyes. Uh, then your um, Namda, Namda products, ceramics, food and agro-processing, the uh, artifacts for exports. And these clusters have been instrumental in direct and indirect job creation of uh, 3,000 persons, and a majority of them being illiterate uh, ladies. Uh, besides exports, many of them have now graduated from micro entrepreneurs to small enterprises. So that has been a direct impact of this intervention. Dr. Jain is known as an institutional uh, person. He, other than the Rajasthan Chamber of Commerce and Industry, he was instrumental in establishing the Rajasthan Stock Exchange as promoter, and he was the president of the Rajasthan Stock Exchange for over 10 years. Sir, may I request you to please? Aapka dhanyavad, Singha Saab, mera pariche karane mein. आपने थोड़ा समय मेरा ज़्यादा बोलने का से छीन लिया। अतुल जी, आपको बहुत-बहुत साधुवाद कि इस महत्वपूर्ण विषय के ऊपर, जिसके ऊपर औद्योगिक विकास बहुत कुछ निर्भर करता है और नियोजन निर्भर करता है, उस विषय के ऊपर चर्चा करने हेतु ये आयोजन किया है और और भी खुशी की बात है कि आपने वीनो गुप्ता जी को आमंत्रित किया है, जो बहुत संबंधित हैं औद्योगिक विकास के लिए। नेता लोग तो वादे करते हैं, लेकिन वादों का निभाना तो कार्यपालक का होता है और वीनो जी इस मामले में सिद्धास्त हैं। मुझे खुशी है आपको इन्वेस्ट राजस्थान समिट होने वाली है, उसके पहले आपको दो समिटों का जो अन the fourth summit will get the benefit of it in the fourth summit. Today, I am Manjpar Bairaji, Sri Raji Varoda Ji, who is the chairman of Lagu Udyog Nagam Kheli, but before that, this is Swayam Udyog, Nariyat, Manufacturing, and they are very successful in this situation. Especially, the small workers, which we call micro, उनकी क्या दिक्कतें हो सकती हैं, लघु वालों की क्या दिक्कतें हो सकती हैं, और मजलों की क्या दिक्कतें हैं, उनको भी आपने आमंत्रित किया। मैंग शासन, केके गुप्ता जी और मनीष गुप्ता जी भी यहाँ उपस्थित हैं। आपका अभिनंदन, राजस्थान चैम्बर ऑफ कामर्स इंडस्ट्री की ओर से। 
और सबसे ज्यादा अभिनंदन और नमन मेरे सन्मुख बैठे हुए लघु उद्योगों में दिलचस्पी रखने वाले लघु उद्योग चलाने वाले मैं देवता और देवियों के समान आपको मानते हुए नमन करता हूँ मेरा सौभाग्य है मुझे एक क्षेत्र में काम करने का अवसर मिला है अवसर तो लघु उद्योग से प्रारंभ कर बड़ी बड़ी इंडस्ट्रियल चलाने का भी है लेकिन जो खास चर्चा का विषय बनता है कि लघु उद्योगों का विकास किस प्रकार संभव हो राज्य सरकार अभी हाल ही में एमएसएमई की नीति 22 बनाने की तैयारी में है आज पार महेंद्र पारक साहब नहीं हैं उन्होंने इस पर चर्चा अभी सभी स्टेक होल्डर से की है और उन्होंने इनपुट मांगे हैं सब ने अपने अपने इनपुट दिए हैं सुझाव दिए हैं निवेदन किए हैं और मैं तो समझता हूं कि वो एक अच्छी पॉलिसी राजस्थान सरकार अल्टीमेटली तो विनू जी के पास ही आएगी क्योंकि ये अतिरिक्त मुख्य सचिव उद्योग के हैं और मेरा मानना है कि उस पॉलिसी से हम राजस्थान के उद्योगों को खासकर एमएसएमई सेक्टर को गति दे सकेंगे अभी हमारे करीब छः लाख यूनिट रजिस्टर्ड हैं राजस्थान में लेकिन अधिकांश थे उसमें 40 परसेंट फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट का हिस्सा उन दस्तकारों का है जो विभिन्न क्लस्टों में और मुझे खुशी है कि इस नीति में क्लस्टर डेवलपमेंट के लिए काफ़ी जोर दिया जा रहा और अभी मैं सुबह थोड़ी समय मिला था तो आदरणीय विनू जी से बात कर रहा था कि इसकी लघु उद्योग वाला आदमी है डिस्ट्रिक्ट में किससे मिलेगा वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट इंडस्ट्री सेंटर से मिलेगा आप उसको थोड़ा मैनिंग उसका बेटर करें जिससे उस डिस्ट्रिक्ट में अन्य जो डिपार्टमेंट से जो संबंधित उद्योग से संबंधित हैं वो उनके चर्चा के बाद जो निर्णय होते हैं उनका पालना कर सके और ये तभी संभव है कि उसका हेड डी का इतना सक्षम अधिकारी हो कि अन्य अधिकारी उस जिले के उसकी बात को मान्यता देते हैं मुझे खुशी है कि आज के इस सभा में जो प्रिंटिंग सेशन दो रखे हैं उसमें रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया को बुलाए हैं मुकेश कुमार जी यहाँ उपस्थित हैं एम्पावर्ड कमेटी भारत सरकार ने हर प्रदेश में रिजर्व बैंक के रीजनल डायरेक्टर अधीन बनाई हुई है उसमें लघु उद्योगों का भी रिप्रेजेंटेशन है और सारे बैंक भी आते हैं मेरे ख्याल से अगर आप रिजर्व बैंक के जब मुकेश जी बोलेंगे तो बताएंगे कि टारगेट्स हैं दस परसेंट सुष्म का अकाउंट्स और अमाउंट दोनों में बढ़ोतरी होनी चाहिए ईयर ऑन ईयर इसी प्रकार सुष्म का लघु का और मीडियम का साठ परसेंट बीस परसेंट ये सब कुछ है लेकिन करीब करीब सारे बैंक एक दो अपवाद स्वरूप छोड़ दें वो टारगेट पूरे नहीं होते तो सबसे बड़ी समस्या मैं आपकी भावना को व्यक्त कर रहा हूं और चूंकि राजीव जी हमारे मुख्यमंत्री जी के नज़दीक हैं और चेयरमैन भी हैं लघु उद्योग निगम के और भीनू जी यहाँ उपस्थित हैं मैं आपके माध्यम से ये कहना चाहूँगा कि इसमें ये लिखा है कि हम बैंकों को एम पॉलिसी में बैंकों से निवेदन करेंगे कि वो अधिक से अधिक ब्रांचेज स्मॉल स्केल की नॉमिनेटेड खोलें लेकिन अगर आप मैंने पिछली दफा मीटिंग में कहा था कि अगर आप नजरिया देखें तो मेरे ख्याल से बैंकों ने बढ़ाने के बजाय एमएसएमई के नॉमिनेटेड ब्रांचेस कम किए और अब ये समय है कि जब तक हम इस दिशा में सबसे बड़ी समस्या अगर आती है लघु उद्योग को वित्त पोषण की आती है और जो माल बनाता है उसका विपणन की आती है इन दो बड़ी समस्याओं का निदान अगर हो और एक तीसरा पॉइंट है स्मॉल स्केल की ग्रोथ का जैसे प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब ने ग्रोथ इंजन कहा है आत्मनिर्भर भारत के संदर्भ में उन्होंने इसकी खास विवेचना की है मेरे ख्याल से क्या ग्रोथ का एक रीजन ये भी है इसका एंसलाइजेशन को बढ़ावा दिया जाना चाहिए जितना आप एंसलाइजेशन से विपणन के क्षेत्र में बड़े उद्योग के साथ उसके विपणन की संबंधित डेवलप करेंगे तो मेरे ख्याल से डिजाइन भी बेटर होगा रॉ मटेरियल भी उसका अवेलेबल होगा टाइम पे पेमेंट भी उसका मिलेगा और पूरी की पूरी एक आइटम बनाने में जो कॉस्ट इफेक्टिवनेस होनी चाहिए जो नहीं होती है 
वो मेरे ख्याल से बच पाएगी आपको खुशी होगी कि जैसे मारुति आज मोटर है सबसे बड़ी ऑटोमोबाइल कंपनी सुजुकी की करीब 6000 हजार एनसलरी यूनिट उससे रजिस्टर्ड और इसी वजह से मारुति अन्य कार निर्माताओं से माकूल कॉम्पिटिटिव एज ज्यादा बेटर रखती मैंने अभी एक कार्यक्रम में जिसमें हमारे राजीव जी मुख्य अतिथि थे राजस्थान चैम्बर के द्वारा अच्छी इंडस्ट्रीज को अच्छी यूनिवर्सिटी से जिन्होंने स्किल मैन पावर एंटरप्रेन्योर डेवलप किए हैं अच्छे हॉस्पिटल जिन्होंने कोरोना के क्षेत्र के अंदर अच्छा काम किया उनका पुरस्कार समारोह रखा था मैंने आपसे कहा था कि आप लघु उद्योग निगम के माध्यम से राज्य सरकार आपकी कैपिटल को बढ़ाए और आप एक एजेंट बने तो खास करके मेरे को जो मैं माल पीएसयूज़ को देता हूं पब्लिक सेक्टर अंडरटेकिंग्स को और जिसमें मेरे को काफ़ी दिनों के बाद पेमेंट मिलता है हालांकि एम एस एम एंटरप्राइज डेवलपमेंट एक्ट कहता है 45 दिन में मिलना चाहिए फैसिलिटी कमिश्नी भी बना रखी है लेकिन वो टूथलेस है उसके निर्णय की अगर एक वो निर्णय करता है तो मुझे डिग्री लेने के लिए जुडिशल प्रोसेस में जाना पड़ता तो इसलिए बेटर यह है कि अगर राजीव जी इसमें कोशिश करें और पब्लिक सेक्टर अंडरटेकिंग्स को स्मॉल स्केल की सप्लाई आप करें और मैं आपको डिलीवरी देने के बाद बिल सबमिट करूं तो आप एटी एटी फाइव परसेंट पैसा मुझे तत्काल दे दें बाकी का परफॉर्मेंस रिपोर्ट के बाद दें तो मेरे ख्याल से ये समस्या सुलझेगी मुझे ख्याल है मैं भी करीब बारह साल उसका डायरेक्टर रहा और चैम्बर की बिल्डिंग में मैंने जगह भी दी थी ट्रेडिंग केस और उसमें करीब उस वक्त मैं आपको बात कर रहा हूँ ये सुखाड़े जी के जमाने की सत्तावन अट्ठावन उनसठ साठ बासठ की उस वक्त करीब ढाई करोड़ रुपए का बिजनेस स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रीज कॉर्पोरेशन ने किया था और लाभ में अंत वो आई थी आपको भी लाभ होगा आपके शेयर होल्डर के रूप में जो डिविडेंड आप सरकार को दोगे उसको भी लाभ होगा स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्री की जो विपणन की पेमेंट की समस्या उसका भी निदान होगा और बैंकों से भी मेरा आग्रह है अगर बैंक वालों को मेरे ख्याल सेशन में बुलाएंगे कि वो सेंक्शन और डिसबर्समेंट में जो टाइम लैग रहता है वो टाइम लैग क्यों रहता है ये मेरी समझ में नहीं आता और वो भी टुकड़ों के अंदर वर्किंग कैपिटल को देते हैं खास करके मेरे बुक डेट्स मेरी जो वर्किंग कैपिटल की लिमिट बनाते हैं उसमें मेरा पेमेंट तो आया छः महीने में आप तो मेरे डेटर्स निकाल देते हैं तो मेरी कम हो जाती क्षमता तो मेरे ख्याल से इन सब पे विस्तृत चर्चा होगी लघु उद्योग का भविष्य उज्जवल है सबसे ज़्यादा नियोजन देने वाला क्षेत्र है सबसे ज़्यादा टैक्स रेवेन्यू देने वाला क्षेत्र है और मुझे खुशी है कि हमारे यहाँ के जो क्लस्टर्स हैं उसके क्लस्टर्स के लिए मेरा वेनू जी एक सुझाव होगा कि आप डी आई सी पे उद्योग मित्र रखें क्योंकि क्लस्टर्स के आदमी ज़्यादातर दस कार हैं वो नहीं समझते हैं झाड़साई लैंग्वेज में मैं आपको कहूँ बैंक का ही वह उनके लिए बैंक क्या है वो समझते नहीं वो प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट नहीं बना सकते वो मार्केट सर्वे की रिपोर्ट नहीं बना सकते और बैंक के लिए ज़रूरी है वो पच्चीस हज़ार का लोन भी देता है तो उसको प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट चाहिए तो मेरे ख्याल से वो उद्योग मित्र उसमें काम करेंगे पहले स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया ने डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर्स रखे हुए थे वो डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्रीज का कनेक्टिविटी करते थे लोन दिलाते थे ऐसी इस पद्धति दोबारा अगर चालू होगी तो मेरे ख्याल से अच्छा है हमारे मुख्यमंत्री जी सदैव रिप्स की जो स्कीम है सब्सिडी वाली वो सब्सिडी की स्कीम में मैं निवेदन करूँगा वो सब्सिडी में एनसलाइजेशन के लिए भी थोड़ी सब्सिडी अगर आप दें जो उद्योग एन को डेवलप करते हैं उनको अगर आप थोड़ी सी सब्सिडी उनके लिए प्रोविजन करें तो मेरे ख्याल से एन अधिक होगा और लघु उद्योग पनपेंगे इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ और आज की चर्चा बहुत सार्थक होगी प्लेनरी सेशंस में बहुत डिटेल से बात करेंगे क्योंकि मैंने देखा है उसमें बोलने वाले बड़े अनुभवी हैं रजनीश हैं वो बहुत लोग बहुत लोग हैं काफ़ी मैं जानता हूँ उनकी काफ़ी कंट्रीब्यूशन स्मॉल स्केल में रहा है और मैं इतना ही कह सकता हूँ वेनू जी और राजीव जी राजस्थान चैम्बर ऑफ कॉमर्स सदैव इस बात में रही है और अभी जैसा सिंगर साहब बता रहे थे हमने भी उन्नीस क्लस्टर्स डिस्ट्रिक्ट में डेवलप किए स्विट्जरलैंड की भागीदारी से डोनेशन नहीं लिया उनसे 
राजस्थान चैम्बर में फिफ्टी परसेंट पार्टनरशिप्स हैं और आज खुशी है करीब तीन हजार महिलाएं उन क्लस्टर्स के अंदर वो पंद्रह से बीस हजार रुपये कमा रही हैं उससे उनका सोसाइटल आउटलुक भी चेंज हुआ है बच्चों का एजुकेशन है हाइजीन है अच्छा स्कूल की बात है खुद कमा से और सासू और नणंद की गालियाँ भी नहीं सहती हैं वो खुद कमा के देती हैं तो तो मेरे ख्याल से जो एमएसएमई की पॉलिसी आएगी वो उत्तम पॉलिसी आएगी और जो इस चर्चा के बाद सजेशन आते हैं वक्ताओं के वो अतुल जी उनको कंसोलिडेट करके राज्य सरकार का वश भेजेंगे ऐसा मेरा मानना है हमारे लोकल एडवाइजरी कमेटी के कजरिया साहब हैं कजरिया टाइल साहब ने नाम सुना होगा वो भी बहुत कीन इंटरेस्ट राजस्थान में लेते हैं बिसाइड साहब से ओन फैक्ट्री उनका हमेशा लक्ष्य रहता है कि फिक्की के माध्यम से जितनी सेवा हम औद्योगिक विकास में राजस्थान की कर सकें तो हमारा परम धर्म होगा इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ आपने मुझे समय दिया औरों को सुनने का अवसर दिया अभी राजीव जी को वीनू जी को सुनना है उससे मैं और लाभान्वित होगा मेरे ज्ञान वर्धन में मेरे को सहायता मिलेगी इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ आप सब महानुभावों का आदर सत्कार करते हुए आप सबका नमन करते हुए अपने वाणी को विराम करता हूँ जय भारत जय हिंद डॉक्टर के एल जैन साहब आई थिंक एवरी टाइम यू मेक अ वेरी इंप्रेसिव एंड वेरी इंफॉर्मेटिव स्पीच एंड आई नोटिस दैट बोथ वीनू गुप्ता जी एंड मिस राजीव अरोड़ा वर हैव मेड सर्टन नोट्स वाइल यू आर टॉकिंग सो विद दैट आई ऑल्सो विल रिक्वेस्ट अतुल जी लेटर ऑन यू मे ऑल्सो लाइक टू गिव अ नोट ऑफ वॉट ही हेज सेट दीज ग्रेट सजेशंस वाइल पॉइंटिंग आउट द चैलेंजेस Uh, to the MSME sector. With this, we come to the keynote speaker, Ms. Veena Gupta, Veena Gupta ji. She is the additional chief secretary, Industries, Government of Rajasthan. Uh, Veena ji, as all of you know, is a senior IAS officer from the 1987 batch, with a very rich and diverse experience, including chairperson, Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board. additional chief secretary pwd medical health principal secretary of medical health she has been principal secretary industries education managing director of reco she has been secretary planning education small scale industries in the government of rajasthan and has been director chemical and petrochemicals in government of india i also know vinu ji for some years she is a uh, most well known as a no nonsense officer and also uh, very business like in her dealings and believes in proactive action in whichever department or ministry she has looked after please madam you are a big hand आदरणीय राजीव अरोड़ा जी चेयरमैन आर एस आई सी आदरणीय के एल जैन साहब जिनको पिछले 25 वर्षों से मैं उद्योगों के लिए आवाज़ उठाते हुए देख रही हूँ हर मंच हर फोरम पे आप उद्योगों के बारे में बोलते हैं और बहुत अच्छी इंसाइट्स इनके पास हैं उद्योगों के लिए आ, मंच पर विराजमान मिस्टर के के गुप्ता मिस्टर मनीष गुप्ता मिस्टर मयंक शाह एंड ऑफ कोर्स माय डियर फ्रेंड मिस्टर अजय सिंह द टॉपिक व्हिच हैज बीन चोजन फॉर टुडेज डिस्कशन फॉर दिस समिट रीइमेजिनिंग द एमएसएमई ग्रोथ स्टोरी इन राजस्थान I think it's a very, very relevant and uh, important topic because uh, everybody sitting here in this hall is aware that MSME is extremely important for the GDP growth of the country and for employment generation. It has already been brought out by Mr. K. L. J. N. and Mr. K. K. Gupta in their remarks how important it is for employment generation. and when we talk of msme growth story it is not 
just manufacturing, but I think even services sector in the MSME segment is equally important. So when we are talking about such an important sector, what is it that government has done about it? Many of you would know, but for those who don't know, uh, I would like to point out certain measures which the present government has taken to boost up the growth of MSME sector in the state. First of all, MSMEs face a lot of problems as far as infrastructure is concerned, and that is why in the last two, three decades, we have seen that there is a lot of haphazard growth of MSMEs. RICO has been developing large industrial areas. Of course, few plots were always reserved for MSMEs, but in smaller towns, smaller places, there were no industrial areas, designated industrial areas for MSME. And this has completely changed in the last two years. More than 100 industrial areas are being opened up by RICO, focusing only on the MSMEs. These are small industrial areas ranging from 10 hectares to 50 hectares, and therefore, the development costs are also within limits, and the plot sizes range from 250 square meters to 750 square meters, and are very, very affordable for the MSMEs. So this step, I think, is going to be uh, a big game changer as far as infrastructure for MSMEs is concerned. The other major step which uh, government has taken uh, is the exemption to all MSMEs for the first three years of their coming into ex uh, existence from all kinds of approvals and all kinds of inspections. This is unprecedented. No other state government has done it so far. And uh, more than 14,000 units have benefited from this. And now this time period is being extended from three years to five years. Uh, the announcement has already been made. Uh, the gadget notification is taking some time, but I think it will be out very soon. So this will be another very big facility for the MSMEs uh, in Rajasthan state. Then we all know, and uh, this has been referred to by Mr. K. L. Jain in his uh, opening remarks, about the problems that MSMEs face as far as their payments are concerned. And uh, a lot of government departments purchase from the MSMEs. Uh, it is one of the directives of government uh, to purchase certain items only from MSMEs. But yes, payments uh, are a problem at times. And to address that issue, the MSME facilitation councils have been set up. These were initially only four in number, but now the number has been increased to nine. Uh, I must admit that during the COVID period, the council meetings could not take place and the number of cases have kind of piled up. But now, since last two months, the councils are meeting very regularly and a number of cases are being uh, disposed of. And a lot of relief is being experienced by the MSMEs as far as their payments from government departments are concerned. Financing has been referred to by all the speakers that financing remains a problem from, for uh, SM, uh, MSMEs and um, our banker friends, I'm sure, will like to dwell more up, uh, upon this problem uh, in the uh, next session. Uh, but from the point of view of state government, uh, a very attractive scheme has been launched, which is uh, called Mukhyamantri Lagu Protsahan Yojana where interest subsidy is being given to uh, MSMEs. And this scheme uh, has become so popular uh, in last two years. It's a very short span of two years. And uh, uh, despite that, it's extremely popular. More than 18,000 entrepreneurs have already benefited. And this year, in the first two months itself, we have exhausted our budget. Uh, because the number of applications was so large. Um, we are trying for some more budget, uh, but uh, it has come as a great relief to the uh, MSME segment. 
Then apart from that, uh, looking to the COVID conditions, RICO had come out with three MNST schemes. A lot of relief was given uh, to uh, smaller uh, entrepreneurs for subdivision, for transfer of plots, and um, that again has uh, benefited the MSMEs. So what next? What is it uh, that government is now uh, planning to do? Uh, of course, all these measures will continue, but um, as Jensab had pointed out, uh, we are coming up with a very comprehensive MSME policy. Uh, it is expected to be out um, within a month or so, and I'm sure uh, with the kind of stakeholder consultations that have been done uh, with the MSMEs, um, the uh, sector will find it very attractive. And uh, we will continue to focus on infrastructure, including the IT infrastructure. But this is what the, uh, what the government would be doing. Uh, my uh, question to you and to FIKI and similar organizations is also, what is it that the industry is doing to help itself? And um, what are the kind of challenges that the MSMEs are going to face in years to come? Uh, yes, some of these challenges like financing, etc., may continue for some more time. Uh, but I do feel that there are some changes uh, which are not being talked about uh, so far. One of them uh, is, of course, the changing uh, consumer demand. You know, the consumer expectations are changing so rapidly that uh, this segment really finds it difficult to keep pace with it. Uh, the consumer wants something new, something more efficient, and uh, they have a plethora of options. So that is where I feel that the MSME segment, uh, with the help of industry associations, or of course some support from government, uh, need to work on this, how to uh, live up to these expectations. Do we need uh, more innovation? Do we need more CFCs? Uh, do we need some kind of a hub and spoke model? How to keep up with the consumer expectations? The other uh, area which I feel uh, where the uh, industry, uh, the larger industry, of course, they are looking at it, but the MSME segment has uh, not really thought about it, is uh, the green and sustainable manufacturing practices. Uh, in my last stint as uh, chairperson pollution control board, I've seen the kind of uh, problems, the challenges that MSE, MSME segment faces when there are certain directions. Uh, the entire NCR region uh, was up in arms when there were directions from the Air Commission to discontinue use of diesel-based uh, gen uh, generators uh, and there were directions to switch over to cleaner fuels. So uh, this is one area which is uh, going to be a major challenge for the MSME segment and uh, the segment as a whole must start thinking about it, must start discussing uh, and I'm sure organizations like FIKI can um, help you uh, with this, we, government can also uh, support uh, how to move to more efficient and to more environmentally sustainable uh, manufacturing practices. Uh, there is no uh, looking back on this front uh, because we can all see the impact of climate change this year. The winters were very severe, the summers were very severe, and at Government of India level also they are now looking at uh, manufacturing practices which are more environmentally sustainable. So this is the future and it's time now that we start thinking about it, uh, how to improve our manufacturing practices so there are lesser emissions and lesser affluent. I think this is going to be one of the major challenges that the SMEs uh, will face in future. and. Uh, just one uh, mention of uh, ancillarization. I think that was a very uh, important point which Mr. Jain raised. Uh, 
uh, yes, government is uh, focusing on getting anchor industries in our various upcoming uh, new industrial areas like the petro zone in uh, Pachpadra and the uh, Marwad uh, industrial cluster uh, because getting a anchor units will help us with ancillarization. It will give a boost to the uh, MSME segment which can then come around the anchor industries. So it is very much on government's agenda and uh, in times to come you will see a lot of uh, traction on that front. Uh, with this, um, I close my remarks and I do hope that uh, today's deliberations, they will help the MSMEs in Rajasthan to be more future ready. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for your uh, encouraging and very informative words. And it is good to realize that uh, MSMEs are very much in the government's uh, sights and in the scheme of things. Thank you very much. And we do hope to continue, Fiki do hopes to continue our association with you in your capacity as ACS Industries. Now may we come to uh, Mr. Rajiv Aroda, as uh, already announced. He is the chairman, Rajasthan Small Industries Corporation. Uh, Rajiv ji is, um, of course, known to most of the people here. Uh, he is also the regional coordinator of All India Professional Congress, West Zone. He was the vice president of Pradesh Congress Committee, Rajasthan. Also chairman of Rajasthan Tourism Development Corporation, Rajasthan Hotels Corporation Limited, and vice chairman of Rajasthan Foundation where he has the rank of, again, Minister of State. He is also the advisory head, India Bullion and Jewelers Association of Rajasthan. He is the president of Federation of Rajasthan Exporters for five consecutive terms. Rajiv Arurajji is an entrepreneur and uh, a successful political leader of Jaipur. He is the founder of the famous Amrapali Jewels and was awarded with the Leaders of Tomorrow Award by Economic Times Now. Rajiv Ji, may I request you to give your address, please. Thank you, Ajay. Aaj ke is महत्वपूर्ण कार्यक्रम जो फिक्की ने एमएसएमई फिफ्थ एमएसएमई समिट का कार्यक्रम है इसमें हमारे बीच में उपस्थित जिनका भी आप उद्बोधन सुन रहे थे और राजस्थान की सरकार एमएसएमई के विकास के लिए इंडस्ट्रियल ग्रोथ के लिए क्या काम कर रही है श्रीमती विनु गुप्ता ने आपको अभी बताया डॉक्टर केल जैन बहुत लंबे समय से इस प्रदेश के ट्रेड एंड इंडस्ट्री के लिए कमिकेग हैं काम कर रहे हैं उनका हमेशा मुझे भी मार्गदर्शन मिलता रहता है श्री के के गुप्ता जी श्री मयंक शाह जी मनीष गुप्ता जी मेरे पुराने मित्र अजय सिंघा जी ये काफी चैंबर्स के साथ जुड़े रहे मैं भी इंडो अमेरिकन चैंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स में और अजय सिंघा जी को इनके पूरे परिवार को लंबे समय जानता हूं यहां पे बहुत सारे मेरे मित्र बैठे हैं रजनीश बंगारी जी किशोर काग जी अतुल जी और सभी उपस्थित भाइयों बहनों नौजवान दोस्तों ये सब ने बताया आपको कि एमएसएमई का महत्व क्या है कितना डायनेमिक सेक्टर है कितना एम्प्लॉयमेंट मिलता है जब मैंने खुद ने बिजनेस शुरू करा था 1978 में आफ्टर गोइंग माय एमबीए मैं अकेला व्यक्ति था ऑफिस भी खोलता था सफाई भी करते थे आज अगर हमारे पास 2000 लोग ऑन रोल हैं मेरी इंडस्ट्री में तो वो एक बात को बताता है कि हो सकता है कि रेवेन्यू जनरेशन बड़ी इंडस्ट्री से ज्यादा आता हो लेकिन एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन जो है वो छोटी इंडस्ट्री से ही आता है ज्यादा MSME से ही आता है और क्योंकि 
पिछले पच्चीस तीस साल में पाँच साल सरकार कांग्रेस की रहती है पाँच साल दूसरी पार्टी की रहती है तो मुझे पाँच साल आपकी तरफ बैठना पड़ता है क्योंकि मैं फोरे का प्रेसिडेंट हूँ फिक्की के संग जुड़ा हुआ हूँ और पाँच साल इस तरफ बैठना पड़ता है तो जो बातें मैं हमेशा टैक्स एडवाइजरी हमारी कमेटी में इंडस्ट्रियल एडवाइजरी बोर्ड बना हुआ है उसके अंदर जो मैं बोलता हूँ इंडस्ट्री को रिप्रेजेंट करता हूँ और बाद में मुझे ही जवाब देना पड़ता है यहाँ पर तो हमेशा हमेशा मैं कहता रहा हूँ कि 2000 करोड़ की एक इंडस्ट्री हम लगाएं उससे ज़्यादा राजस्थान जैसे बहुत बड़े भौगोलिक क्षेत्र में दो करोड़ की एक हज़ार इंडस्ट्री लगना शायद ज़्यादा महत्वपूर्ण है और ये सच्चाई भी है जब मैं आप लोगों को देखता हूँ कि राजस्थान में शायद नब्बे परसेंट से ज़्यादा जो इंडस्ट्री है वो एम एस एम ई सेक्टर के अंदर ही है और इस बात को प्रूव करती है कि जिस तरीके का हमारे यहाँ क्योंकि एक लैंग लॉक स्केक है कोई बंदरगाह हमारे पास में नहीं है जो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग बड़े लेवल पे हुए और उसके बाद वहाँ से गैरेक्ट एक्सपोर्ट होता हो और बहुत परंपरागत कला और आर्ट बहुत ज़्यादा है क्योंकि मैं खुद आर्ट और क्राफ्ट से जुड़ा हुआ हूँ और मैंने पूरे देश में घुमा हूँ लोगों के बीच में रहा हूँ आदिवासियों के बीच में जाके रहा हूँ मैं और आ, मैंने देखा है कि राजस्थान और गुजरात दो राज्य ऐसे हैं जिनमें सबसे ज़्यादा जो हमारा क्राफ्ट ट्रेडिशन है वो बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट है और एक छोटी सी एक यूनिक लगती है जिसमें 500 सौ चाहे महिलाएँ चाहे पुरुष बैग के काम करते हैं और उससे लोगों को रोज़गार मिलता है रोटी कपड़ा मकान मिलता है और किसी भी सरकार में जब आप बैठे हो तो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण ये है कि बेरोजगारी ना हो तो लॉ एंड ऑर्डर की सिचुएशन कंट्रोल में रहती है क्योंकि अगर लोग के पास खाने के लिए नहीं है तो वो इस केक में परेशानी होती है तो राजस्थान में आपने देखा है कि हमेशा से लघु उद्योग निगम को भी बहुत मौका दिया गया बहुत बढ़ाया गया सुखाड़िया जी के कैम में जोशी जी के कैम में शिवशर माथुर जी के कैम में के एल जैन साहब भी बहुत समय तक उसमें डायरेक्ट कर रहे और अभी मेरी खुद की पसंद से मुख्यमंत्री जी ने मुझे ये जिम्मेदारी दी इन्वेस्टर समिट राजस्थान में होने वाला है उद्योग के विकास के लिए राजस्थान की सरकार कृत संकल्प है बीस साल पहले हम लोगों ने एक आई करा था इंटरनेशनल राजस्थानी कॉन्क्लेव उसके संग भी मुझे बहुत नज़दीकी से उसमें काम करने का मौका मिला था वो देश के अंदर पहली बार ऐसा कॉन्क्लेव हुआ था जब प्रवासी राजस्थानियों को पूरे देश और दुनिया से यहाँ पे बुलाया गया था और उस वक्त मुख्यमंत्री जी जो आज भी मुख्यमंत्री श्री अशोक गहलोत जी ने जो प्रवासी आए थे उनसे ये अपेक्षा करी थी कि वो राजस्थान जो उनकी जन्मभूमि है जो उनकी मातृभूमि है उसको अपनी कर्मभूमि बनाएँ और यहाँ पर सामाजिक सरोकारों से जुड़ें उन्होंने बहुत ज़्यादा किसी से नहीं कहा कि आप आके लाके आप इंडस्ट्री लगाएं उन्होंने अपने उद्बोधन में तब भी कहा था कि आपको जहाँ पे मुनाफा होगा वहाँ पे आप काम करोगे लेकिन आपको राजस्थान के गांव कस्बे में धर्मशाला खोलनी हो स्कूल खोलना हो कॉलेज खोलना हो अनाथ आश्रम खोलना हो उस कस्बे का विकास करना हो कम से कम उसमें अपनी भागीदारी निभाएँ लेकिन बीस साल में बाईस साल में बहुत परिवर्तन आ गया राजस्थान एक लैंग ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी बन गई हमारे पास जो माइंस हैं मिनरल्स हैं अभी मीनू जी बता रही थी पचपतरा में इतना बड़ा पेट्रोकेमिकल का कॉम्प्लेक्स आ रहा है तो बिल्कुल परिस्थितियाँ बदल चुकी हैं और मुझे बहुत खुशी है कि फिक्की ने भी एक जिम्मेदारी उठाई मैं कोरोना के टाइम में दो साल तक जब पूरे देश में लोग बंद बैठे हुए थे मैं बड़ा फिक्की कि हमारे नेशनल इसके एक एग्जीक्यूटिव ने समय समय पे वेब से लोगों से मिलते रहे मैं कहा से चालीस पचास आपने सेमिनार कर दिए होंगे टूरिज़म पे हों एम एस एम ई पे हों डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट्स के ऊपर हों और लोगों को जोड़े रखा एक नई सोच आई और फिक्की और सी आई की मांग के ऊपर ही जब कोरोना की सेकेंड वेव आई है और उस वक्त पूरे देश के अंदर उद्योग बंद पड़े हुए थे और ख़ास तौर से एम एस बंद थे उस वक्त मैंने मुख्यमंत्री जी से अनुरोध करा अभय कुमार जी उस वक्त होम कमिश्नर होते थे उनसे बात करी सी से बात करी कि राजस्थान में उद्योग बंद ना करा जाए यहाँ का जो इंडस्ट्री है वो सारे कोरोना के जो नॉर्म्स से जो प्रोटोकॉल थे उनको मानेंगे लेकिन हमको इंडस्ट्रियल एरियाज को खुले रहने की अनुमति दी जाए और मुझे खुशी है कि उसका ज़बरदस्त फ़ायदा हुआ जब महाराष्ट्र बंद था और पूरी दुनिया के अंदर चाइना के खिलाफ एक इकोनॉमिकल और इमोशनल बैकलैश चल रहा था 
پوری دنیا میں جو ملک امپورٹ کرتے ہیں کیونکہ میں ایکسپورٹ سے جڑا ہوں نریات سے جڑا ہوں تو انہوں نے ہندوستان کو ایک امپورٹنگ سورس کے روپے میں دیکھا اور اس سمیہ میں بھی ایکسپورٹ چار پتیشت ہمارا بڑھا تھا اور ابھی اس سال پچھلے ورش کے مقابلے چھتیس پرسنگ جو نریات بڑھا ہے اس کا بہت بڑا کارن یہ ہے کہ رائستان سرکار کا اچھا کرونو کا منیجمنٹ اچھی ویکسینیشن کی پولیسی اور ان کا خاص طور سے ہینگ ہولڈنگ کرنا جو ہمارے ایم ایس ایمی ہیں ان کے لیے سیتا پرہ کا عدوگی کشیطر کھلا رہتا تھا جو ہماری بسی جاتی تھی کاریگروں کو لے کے ان کے لیے وشیش پرمک ملے ہوئے تھے تو جب سرکار اتنی چنتت ہو جب سرکار اس شیطر کے وکاس کے لیے پتی بد ہو تب ہی یہ کام ہو سکتا ہے اور اس لیے ایک گروت سکیوری ہو رہی ہے بے فکی نے آرگنائز کرا تھا دوبائی میں ہم نے شروع کرا انویسٹر سمیٹ کا پہلا ہم لوگوں نے وہاں پہ ایک بڑی میکنگ کری اور مجھے خوشی ہے کہ وہاں پہ لگ وقت پیتالیس ہزار کروڑ روپے کے ایم اوئی سائن ہوئے اور اب تک اس پردیش میں نئے نویش آنے کے لیے نئے ادیوک آنے کے لیے دس لاکھ کروڑ روپے سے زیادہ کے ایم اوئیوز ایل او آئی سائن ہو چکے ہیں اور جب سمیٹ ہوئی گی اکٹوبر میں اس سے پہلے امید کرتے ہیں کہ اس میں سے کافی بڑی سنگیہ کے اندر گراؤنگ بریکنگ ہو جائے گی لوگ اپنا کام شروع کر دیں گے ان کو کیونکہ جو ابھی انگسٹریز ڈپارٹمنٹ کی جو ہماری جو کیم ہے جو بیوروکریسی کو جو لیڈ کر رہی ہیں بینو گپتہ جی ان کے سنگ مہندر پارک جی اور گفرنگ جو کورپوریشن سے ہیں وہ بڑے فوکس کے ہیں اور میرے خاص سے ایسا واتن دوبارہ آنے والا نہیں ہے تو یہ اب راجستان ایک نئی چھلانگ لگانے کی استطیق اندر ہے ایک ابرتے ہوئے انگسٹریل گیسکنیشن کے روپ میں اور دو گیسکنیشن کے روپ میں اور ہم کمپیٹ کرنے کے لئے تیار ہیں انہیں راجوں سے مجھے کہنے کا وشکتہ نہیں آپ میں زیادہ کو معلوم ہے کہ ریپس نائنکین جو آئی تھی اس کے اندر ایس جی ایس کی کی ریبیک الیکٹریس کی کی ریبیک سکیم کیوں کی منگی جو کیکس لگتا ہے اس میں چھوک اور نیومریبل آپ کو انسینکیوز دیئے ہیں اور ابھی ایک ریپس کیونکہ کیونکہ بھی شاید تیاری چل رہی ہے میکنگ ابھی کچھ دنوں پہلے ہوئی ہے سب ادیوگک جتے بھی ہماری اکائیاں ہیں ادیوگک جو سنگکن ہیں ان سے رائے لی گئی ہے تو مجھے نشید اس سے لگتا ہے کہ آنے والا سمیں آپ سب کے لئے اچھا ہونے والا ہے اور میں کیونکہ رائستان لوگو ادیوگ نگم کا چیئرمن ہوں ہم لوگ جو ہم لوجسکک آپ کے پارٹنر ہیں جو آئی سی کی چلتی ہیں ان لینگ کنکنر گپو ہوتے ہیں ان کو ہم لوگ مینج کرتے ہیں جو ائر کارگو کمپلیکس اس کو مینج کرتے ہیں اور ابھی کچھ دنوں پہلے ہی جوت پور جا کے آئے میں بھی گیا تھا بینو گپتا جی بھی گئی تھی ہماری منتری شکنطلہ راوت بھی گئی تھی اور ان لینگ کنکنر جو گپو وہاں پہ ہے اس نے تین گناہ وہاں پہ بزنس ہمارا بڑھا ہے اور اس کی فیصلے کی اس کو ہم بڑھانے کی کوشش کر رہے ہیں جو کنکنر جاتے ہیں وہ گبل ایک کے اوپر دوسرا کنکنر رکھے جیسے گبل گیا کے ٹرین جاتی ہے اس لیے کنکنر فیوچر میں جا سکیں تو اس کی کوشش چل رہی ہے ادھاپور میں نیا ائر کارگو کمپلیکس ہم شروع کرنا جا رہے ہیں جلدی بیکا نیر میں ایک نئی آئی سی کی شروع کرنا چاہتے ہیں تو یہ سب جو انفرنسیکچر پر کام ہو رہا ہے اس کا سب سے بڑا لاب ملتا ہے تو وہ ایم ایس ایمی کو مل رہا ہے نریات کو مل رہا ہے کیونکہ سیونٹی فائیو پرسنگ جو ایکسپورٹس ہو رہا ہے راجستان سے دیش سے وہ ایم ایس ایمی کے دورہ ہی ہو رہا ہے اور کیونکہ آپ کا آگے والا سیشن ہونے والا ہے لیکن میں کیونکہ سرکار کا پرتینتی یہاں پہ ہوں میں بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ راجستان کی جو ایم ایس ایمی سے لیکک پولیسی ہے اور سکارٹ اپ سے لیکک جو لیکک پولیسی ہے وہ میں نے کہا سے دیش کی سرفشریسٹ پولیسی ہے تو اور اس کی وجہ سے نئے سکارٹ اپ گیولپ ہوئے ہیں پہلے لوگ بات کرتے تھے کہ خالی بینگلور ہے پونے ہیں ان کے اندر ہی اچھے سکارٹ اپس ہو رہے ہیں آپ کو معلوم ہے راجستان میں کس طرح کی کہ گیولپ بینک ہو رہا ہے اور میں ایک اور آپ کو اشفاعت دلانا چاہتا ہوں کہ راجستان کا جو انگسٹری اور کومرس کا جو دپارٹمنٹ ہے اس کے علاوہ جو کورپوریشنز ہیں جہاں وہ ریکو ہو چاہیں آر ایس آئی سی ہو وہ بھی نشت روپ سے آپ کی جو بھی سمسیہ ہیں ان کے اوپر وشش طور سے دھان دیں گے اور آنے والے سمیہ کے اندر ہم لوگ کوشش کریں گے کہ آپ اور ہم دونوں ملکے ایک بھاگی داری کی روپ کے اندر ایم ایس ایمی کو بڑھاوا دیں یہ آپ کا جو آج سمیہ کے آج جو آپ کے گیلیبریشنز ہوں گے مجھے پورا وشواس ہے کہ اس میں بہت ہی سار تک سجاو آئیں گے 
और हम आशा करेंगे कि आपके जो सुझाव आए वो आप हमको भेजने की कोशिश करें उनको माननीय मुख्यमंत्री महोदय के स्तर के ऊपर और उद्योग मंत्री के स्तर के ऊपर लेके जाएं और उनको आने वाले समय के अंदर जो नीतियां बनेंगी राज्य सरकार की उनके अंदर जोड़ सकें मैं इस विषय पे घंटों बोल सकता हूं लेकिन मुझे मालूम है कि समय की सीमा है आपने मुझे यहाँ बुलाया और जो मौका दिया है उसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और फिक्की जो काम राजस्थान के औद्योगिक विकास में जो सहयोग दे रही है जो काम कर रही है उसकी मैं प्रशंसा करता हूँ आशा करता हूँ कि हमारा सहयोग ऐसे ही आगे बढ़ता रहेगा बनेगा धन्यवाद जय हिंद थैंक राजीव जी फॉर शेयरिंग योर इंसाइटफुल नॉलेज एंड विजडम विथ ऑल आर पार्टिसिपेंट्स टूडे बिफोर वी मूव टू दी वोट ऑफ थैंक्स मे आई रिक्वेस्ट द डिग्नेटरीज to release the knowledge uh, document prepared by resurgent india vinu ji and rajiv ji <clears throat> may i request you to kindly release the document atul aaya I now request a presentation of mementos by Mr. Meng Shah, Chairman Fiki Rajasthan Subcommittee on Manufacturing and Exports. He is MD, Global Services Limited. Sir, may I request you to present the memento on behalf of Fiki to Mr. Rajiv Arora Sahab? Atul, abhi aaja upar. Shah Sahab, may I request you to present one more memento to our guest of honor, Ms. Vinu Gupta Ji, Additional Chief Secretary, Industries, Government of Rajasthan. <clears throat> Now, may I request Manish Gupta Ji, Chairman, Fiki Subcommittee on Infrastructure, and Chairman, Insulation Energy Limited. to present a memento on behalf of fiki to dr k l jain sahab <clears throat> also another memento to uh, mr k k gupta director research in india limited sir Manish ji one more moment to to Shah sahab Mr Shah as you know is chairman of Fiki's some committee on manufacturing and exports MD of global services thank you very much now may i introduce Mr Manish Gupta he is the chairman as i int uh, introduced to Rajasthan sub committee on infrastructure and he is also the chairman of his own company insulation energy limited he is a first generation entrepreneur with a very rich experience of more than 20 years in the business of um, steel industrial pipeline accessories real estate health and fitness and independent solar power producer mr gupta has set very high standards of excellence in the areas of innovation manufacturing uh, enhancing production capacities within the company executing the profitable integration of all these technologies and of course business outreach 
which makes the profit. His vision and strategy have played a pivotal role in establishing his company INA as a well-established player in the solar PV module and manufacturing industry. His venture, Insulation Energy Limited, has emerged as the largest solar manufacturer in Rajasthan and one of the leading solar power companies in India with global accolades. Sir, may I request you to give the vote of thanks and may I also request to accept a small moment on behalf of Fiki. Thank you, sir, for inviting you. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all speakers, sponsors, delegates, and media representatives for their represent, presence on this program. My special thanks to Sri Mayank Shah Ji, Sri Rajiv Arora Ji, Madam Vinu Gupta Ji, Sri KK Gupta Ji, Sri KL Jain Saab uh, for their uh, time and inputs on this program. As you all know, FICCI has always been proactive and raising and addressing the issues of MSMEs which hamper the seamless growth of MSME. FICCI through its MSME committee puts, uh, puts across its view and a suggestion to the government to bring the real industry issue related to MSME on the table. We are committed to conduct more activities like this in future for benefits of the MSME fraternity. At the outset, I would like to state that we are holding this fifth summit of the MSME sector in Rajasthan after a gap of two years. The past two years have been perhaps the most turbulent and challenging times of our lives. The MSME sector in India and particularly Rajasthan also faced major handwinds, but as in the DNA of, of our all Rajasthanis, we not only face these challenges, but also turn them into opportunities. Or we have done a lot of work in the MSME in the past two years. The MSME sector was the forefront of the initiatives of the central government, and especially by enabling policies of the government of Rajasthan under the able leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister, Sri Ashok Gailoji. Rajasthani have led the country in the past, giving in the biggest industrialist that ever walked in this earth. Today we have entered the 75th year of independence of the celebration, Ajadi Ka Amrat Mahushav. We are all set to do it again. The summit organized by Fikki Rajasthan chapter and supported by the state government should become the turning point to the attractive investment general highly skilled employment and promote a culture of innovation. I sincerely believe all the suggestions, feedback and policies, changes that have been uh, offered to the state government through its able leadership, Honorable Sri Rajiv Ji, Madam Vinu Ji, Sri Mahindra Ji, KK Gupta Ji and KL Jain Ji would be well received. In return, I on the, of the behalf of entire MSME sector of the state, Rajasthan, assure you that we would leave no stand it uh, unturned and uh, would be everything in our capacity to make Rajasthan a hub of industrial activity. I also like to use this opportunity to thank our uh, partners for the program, Global Surface Limited, Amazon, State Bank of India, Resurgent India Limited, ECGC Limited, DIP Capital. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks for successful concluding the fifth Rajasthan MSME Summit और मैं अपने शब्दों के साथ यही कहना चाहूँगा रास्ते उन्हीं को मिलते हैं जिन्हें आगे बढ़ने का जुनून है वो कुछ अलग नहीं कर पाते जिंदगी जिंदगी में सुकून है धन्यवाद आप सभी को बस चाय पे आमंत्रित करूँगा धन्यवाद नो कॉफी ब्रेक ये आपके चश्मे यस ग्रुप फॉर अतुल प्लीज कम आ जाओ
moderator of this program. So we are with us, Shri Bakshi, who is a partner in Incubations. He is a CEO. We are with us, Mr. Mukesh Kumar. He is General Manager, Financial Inclusion and Development, Reserve Bank of India. We are Mr. Vidas Piyush Dabriwal, Head Statics Partnership, DRIP. We are with us, Sri S. Vijay Kumar, DGM, Circle Credit Officer, State Bank of India. I think the topic today we want to discuss with you is financing, innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. These are the basic topic of this session. When we are talking about the entrepreneurships, so we talk about the entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is the person who takes the risk to start the venture with the sole aim to get the profit. Now coming to after he started, have some idea to set up any business. Either you talk about the service sector or you talk about the manufacturing sector, so he requires so many things. First of all, he requires the place of business. Then our infrastructure. Above all, he requires money. Money is the most important issue here. So we are with us, our bank's regulator, Reserve Bank of India, Shri Mukesh Kumarji, and we are all also with us, a banker from State Bank of India, SPJ Kumarji. In a moderate session, just I was talking to you. In so many webinars, so as a research in India or association of the financial advisor, we have conducted about 130 webinars in a different subject. SMI was the main subject. So just I want to share the experience which I got from the different stakeholders. First important issue, COVID. Where the economy was in doldrum, and Reserve Bank had come out decent circular, decent program, where the emergency line of credit was announced on, as you, if you are outstanding, as on 28th February, 20. For that outstanding, fund-based outstanding, you can take 20%, then increase to 30, then 40%. Now question is, what is the challenge now? Challenge is who has no outstanding on the date, what they will do? This is a major respect, this is a major challenge for which there is no reply. Another issue, a new entrepreneurs who set up a new industry, he is going to the bank with project report other things. So what is the reaction of the bank without collateral security? The so bank is also insisting for the collateral security in all webinars, in all conferences, in all summit. These are the major aspects of the collateral securities. I am also advocating that why we should not have a cash flow. Instead of assets-based lending, why we should not have a cash flow lending? I think this is also an important aspect. This is one issue. And this I am giving some issue to our banker friends 
and to RBI. If any solution is there, let we should have a solution. Otherwise, we should not draw down the points and refer to the government. This is one issue which I am talking to you. Another issue is now outstanding is their account become as sick or bank has restructured it. No restructure date has been expired. No stress assets is increasing. NP level is going up. So whether the Reserve Bank or government should not come with another scheme of the restructuring so that the account can be remained as a standard. There are so many other schemes. If the bank restructure the account, the account will be remain as a NP account. It will be transferred to a NP account. That should also be considered. Third issue. Now question is in covert. Sale has come down. Profit is not there. Now COVID is over. So you are submitting a review proposal to the bank. Consider it. So bank is asking you cannot achieve the projections because your past performance is not up to the mark. Now question is all CMA data, is all the projections are based on the past experience, past projections. So bankers are not accepting the sales. Once the sales are not accepted, then definitely assessment of the working capital limit will not be there. Whether you talk about the first method of lending or second method of lending, you talk about the NAIC committee, Tund and Chore committee, it won't be applied for that. Then what is solution for that? Fourth issue is the cycle of the working capital. If the working capital cycle is three months, now due to the COVID period or raw material holding, receivable, the period has gone up. So past experience will not apply to assessment of the working capitals. That is also a challenge before the bankers also. So we have to find out some solution for that. What should be a solution? Then the important aspect, which morning we also talk, about the receivable. So about 90 days, 120 days, the payment are not being received. So you have to take a longer period. Now we're talking about the trade. Trade can be, this receivable can be discounted to some exchange where it is without recourse. Once the SME discount the bills under the exchange, the liability of the seller sees there. Now it is liability of the buyer. That is an important issue. Lekin acceptance of the bill is major issue in the working capital limits. That we have to discuss. So this financial aspect why I am talking to you, these are the major issue which I pose before my other speakers. Another question of we are talking of the innovations. Now industry requires innovations. Because obsolete technology you cannot work now. Every now and then there is a separate system where you should be have a innovation. Innovation is a must. For that technology has to be upgraded. There are so many schemes which have been introduced by the government, where you can have a subsidy up to 70 or 80 percent finance from the government for the new technology aspects. And digital banking is also the most important issue. State Bank of India and some other bank, now we are talking about 59 minutes, your limit can be processed and you can get a principal sanction for that. That means technology aspect of digital banking is important in these days. That we have to see the how technology work in that respect. So these are the four topics which I am talking about the entrepreneurships. We are talking about the financial aspect. We are talking about the innovations. We are talking about
technology aspects. I think this is the main issue in the public uh, issue of this session. So first of all, I invite respected Shri Mukhi, Dr. Mukesh Kumarji. He is General Manager, Financial Inclusion and Development Department. Mr. Mukesh is General Manager in Reserve Bank of India. He is looking after implementation of the property sector lending and MSME lending in the state of Rajasthan. As in charge of financial inclusion and development department of the RBI Jaipur, he is PhD in management and hold MBA degree with specialization in human resources management. He is also certified associate of Indian Institute of Banker, a certified bank trainer, and also Institute of Finance, Bombay, in which he scored highest aggregate marks all over India. In addition, he is a certified behavior event interviewer, certified in workplace, five profile by Center for Applied Studies. I think he is a very qualified person and he is also a regulator of the banks. So he is regulating the banking sector. I think he is the right person to talk about the issue posed by me or what he can suggest for the SME sector how the SME can be benefited by this session. Because once you go, so you say this session was going to be proofful. Or where we cannot solve the problem, let we should come out the white paper and submit to the government. With this word, I request Sri Mukesh Kumarji, please give your thoughts. Thank you, Guptaji. Mr. Bakshi, uh, Mr. Piyus, Dabriwal, Mr. Vijay Kumar, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, as we all know, this is a FIKI summit on MSMEs, how MSMEs can progress. And this particular session is related to MSMEs and FinTech. So let me start with very basic concept of economics that is which are important factors of production. If we talk about four factors of production, it includes land, labor, capital, and the last one is entrepreneur mindset. So these are the four important factors of production. Out of these four factors, if we think from the point of view as to which factor is most difficult to develop, I believe it will be the business mindset, the entrepreneur mindset, which is very, very difficult to develop. If we talk about state of Rajasthan, land is available in abundance. Rajasthan is the largest state of the country. If we talk about labor, there is no scarcity of labor in state of Rajasthan. If we talk about capital, we will discuss about this particular issue. But the first most important issue, which is very, very difficult to develop, that is the business mindset. If we take the example of state of Rajasthan, Rajasthanis are born with business mindset. If we speak about the companies which are owned by Marwadis, top 10 Marwadis, they have the business share in the market cap of BSE that is to the tune of 6%. If we talk about billionaires, 40% of billionaires, they are Marwadis. So as far as this entrepreneurship is concerned, this is a very positive aspect with state of Rajasthan. But even then, the MSMEs, the industry sector is not doing so very well as it has the potential to do. If we talk about last 10 years, the share of industries in the state GDP, it has come down by 7 to 8%. And share of agriculture, that has increased by 2%. If we talk about neighboring state, that is Gujarat, industries have, the share of industries has increased by 14%. So what is it that is lacking in state of Rajasthan? that needs to be discussed in seminar like this. So 
one is the focus on agriculture sector in rajasthan the share of agriculture sector is 30% whereas national level it is only 17% or 18% if we talk about some of the developed countries some of the countries where we can draw some lessons pertaining to msme sector what comes to our mind is china what comes to our mind is south korea these are the countries those who have done very well based on their msme sector in 1984 the gdp of china and india was same now china is more than five times that of india all this growth has come from mainly msme focus on industry sector if we talk about south korea south korea and india we became independent almost during around the same time the kind of neighborhood neighborhood problem which we have with pakistan similar kind of problem they also had the composition of gdp of india and south korea that was also more or less the same but very soon they shifted their focus from agriculture to msme and therefore if in today's time the per capita gdp of south korea it is more than 16 times that of what we have in our country so my point is that we need to focus on msme sector and this particular sector has the potential to take india to that 5 trillion dollar economy which the country is aspiring for so to do this capital plays a very very important role as mr gupta rightly pointed out that entrepreneurs msme entrepreneurs they are facing lot of challenges as far as bank lending is concerned now what is the role of bank loans in developing a country and helping msmes to grow i was giving you the example of china in china the gdp size is around 16 to 17 trillion and the bank lending in that country provided by all banks put together that is more than some 30 trillion dollar that is 182% of gdp what is the percentage in our country it is somewhere 55% we are not even 100% which most our neighboring countries are so therefore lending has to increase in china it is 182% in india it is somewhere around 55% but if we come to rajasthan it is further low to the level of 42% so it is the duty of all of us all bankers including reserve bank of india that we help the credit to gdp ratio to grow so that msmes start getting credit from the banking sector now this important aspect also needs to be uh, pointed out that the banking sector is having surplus liquidity as late as about a month back the surplus liquidity available with banking sector was to the tune of 6 lakh crore that much liquidity was available with the banking sector if we talk about the share of rajasthan our total lending for all banks put together in india that is somewhere around 110 to 120 trillion rupees rajasthan it is somewhere around 4 to 5 trillion so the share of rajasthan in gdp is 5% but share of bank lending in rajasthan is less slightly less than 5% so what i mean to say that the banks have surplus liquidity available with them msme entrepreneurs they are in need of money from the banking sector there is one committee parliamentary committee set up that committee has identified that the credit gap in msme sector is somewhere around 25 trillion 25 trillion rupees how much bank lending is provided to msmes that is somewhere around 15 trillion means whatever lending banks have given so far the requirement is more than double so there is lot of appetite available banks have surplus liquidity and even after that 
these two players are not able to come together one of the reason is that the kind of parameters which banks ask for the msmes perhaps are not in a position to meet those requirement mr gupta was pointing out that the collateral free loan is not available despite there being guidelines from reserve bank of india that up to 10 lakh no collateral should be asked for even then the msmes are not getting credit so what is the via media via media is that fintech fintech companies they will be playing the role of a bridge between msme and banks these two entities can come together with the help of fintech fintech companies they have different ways of assessing the credit worthiness of a borrower one of the fintech company i was looking at the website they use 5000 different parameters so as to assess the credit worthiness of a borrower as mr k l jain was suggesting or he was mentioning during his address that reserve bank conducts many seminars many meetings and wherein we interact with bankers one of the suggestions which experienced bankers give to their fellow bankers that if you are lending to an msme entrepreneurs one of the important criteria is that you should pay a personal visit to the unit of that entrepreneur some of the bankers even suggest that you should also go to the residence of that entrepreneur now if you look at the availability of time which is there with a branch manager perhaps the time available to a branch manager is very very less and if he has to pay a personal visit so as to assess the credit worthiness a it is time consuming b it is inefficient and c is it effective if there are two branch managers they go to the same unit perhaps their opinion their observation may be different so it is time consuming it is inefficient and it is ineffective if we talk about fintech companies the kind of database which they use that is it is very fast it has speed secondly it has volume and third it can be multiplied and its reliability and validity can be assessed through various modes through various means through various studies so therefore fintech is something which can bring bankers and msme together it can help bankers in assessing the credit needs of msme entrepreneurs it can help bankers in identifying which entrepreneur is worthy of giving loan and therefore rbi has been emphasizing on having some kind of tie up with banks because banks have surplus liquidity these fintech companies they have technology with the help of which a credit worthy borrower can be identified and therefore a match between banks and fintech companies collaboration between fintech and banks can service the needs and requirement of msme entrepreneurs now what needs to be done from the msme entrepreneurs point of view as i mentioned that fintech companies will be using different database different data points and therefore it is suggested that msme entrepreneurs should try to create as many database as many data points as is possible they should do all their transactions through bank account they should use mobile technology mobile banking different payment modes so as to create more and more database they should pay, make their all payments through bank account they should accept all their payments maybe through bheem upi or other digital modes of accepting payments so that more and more database is created and their credit worthiness can be identified by banks so banks will take help of fintech companies and with the help of fintech companies they will be able to provide and increase enhance lending to this msme sector so this is what i wanted to mention as far as role of reserve bank is concerned reserve banks is taking cognizance of the role of fintech what role it can play and reserve bank is conscious about its role and responsibility as far as lending to msme sector is concerned 
Mr. K L Jain mentioned that we have given different different targets, and banks are hardly achieving those targets. PM Task Force targets in state of Rajasthan, there is hardly any bank which is achieving all these targets. So therefore, it is on the part of banks that they should start looking as fintech companies as a collaborator, as a partner, so as to achieve these targets and also help MSMEs. Coming back to fintech, Rizzo Bank had set up a separate fintech unit in one of our department in 2018. We created a regulatory sandbox in 2019 and one of the cohort in that regulatory sandbox is MSME financing. There are very few countries, very few regulators, those who have created regulatory sandbox and Rizzo Bank is one among those. Now we have created a separate department in the year 2022. This year in January, a fintech department has been created and a separate RBI innovation hub that also has been created in March 2022. It's set up at Bangalore with a capital of 100 crore. That is what is the role which Rizzo Bank is doing. Rizzo Bank is also giving license to account aggregators. These account aggregators will collect the information, financial information of borrowers, including MSME borrowers. And with the help of these account aggregators, it is expected that the lending to MSME sector will increase Further, there are P2P lending, there are other type of NBFCs and banks which are using technology or partnering with technology companies so as to enhance and increase the lending to MSME sector. So FinTech is really playing a very big role. Its growth and FinTech adoption in our country has been higher than the world average. And there are 18, as many as 18 FinTech companies in India which have got unicorn status. So this is what is fintech which is having the potential and caliber so as to provide lending to MSME sector and also bring technology in the entire financial sector, make it more efficient, make it more viable for MSME so that the credit from MS uh, banking sector become appro approachable by the MSME sector. So to summarize, I need not emphasize the role of MSMEs. MSMEs play a very, very vital role in our country. Banking sector, their main and primary business is providing lending. That is where they earn their income from. FinTech companies can bring MSME and bank together and by way of bringing these two entities together, the bank lending to MSME sector can be increased and the gap of around 20-25 trillion which is available in MSME sector, that gap can be, can be met by way of having collaboration with fintech companies. Let me also mention that we are talking about 5 trillion dollar economy. The government is conscious of the fact that it is MSME sector which can take India to the $5 trillion economy. And as I gave the example of some of the other countries like China and South Korea, these countries have reached to the status of developed countries by way of providing focus on MSME sector. On similar lines, MS, uh, this State Bank of India has conducted some study. As per that study, if we have to reach to the $5 trillion economy, there has to be $1 trillion lending which has to be provided by banking sector. $1 trillion is equivalent to around 70 trillion rupees. As of now, the total lending is 120. The increase has to be more than half, at least more than half of what is the existing lending. If we have to achieve that pace, if we have to achieve that growth, then definitely we have to have partnership with fintech companies or adopt technology from the banking point of view and then we can enhance and help MSME and the country to grow. So thank you very much. This is what I wanted to present a perspective from Rizzo Bank point of view and uh, this is what was my viewpoint. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Dr. Mukherjee. I think you keep everything very straight. Surplus liquidity is available with the banking sector. And there is no dearth of the funds with the banks. But the appetite of Rajasthan is quite high. So the bank has a large scope for lending in the banking sector. You give to Guru Mantra. One is fintech company. Fintech is a order of the day. Unless the bank have a collaboration with the bank, fintech company, five trillion economy dream of the Honorable Prime Minister is difficult to achieve. So for which SME sector is playing very, very important roles. You also suggested the SME sector, SME entrepreneurs, to have a transaction in the banking sector instead of keeping cash or something like that. I think accounts should be rooted, all the transactions should be rooted in the banking sector. I think this is a great message as a regulator of the banks you have given to SME sector. Now I'm coming to Mr. Bakshi. Mr. Bakshi is an engineering graduate from Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi. An MBA from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Mr. Bakshi is passionate about the adoption of experimental alternative education system and the revival of indigenous knowledge and spiritual tradition of India. Mr. Bakshi's partner in incubations at CIIE, CEO, India leading startup. I think this is a most important respect for Mr. Bakshi. Startup is facing a big problems because once he going to the banking sector, because it is loss making venture. Three or four years, it cannot have any profit. So bankers are reluctant. For that solution is to go the investor. Investor taking their education at their margin and giving on the basis of the valuation, on the ratio of their schemes, some loan to them. I think he's the right person to talk how he can help the startup, how a technology play an important role, because he is graduate from the Indian Institute of Technology. So I will not stand between you and him. So I request Mr. Bakshi to give his thoughts. Mr. Bakshi. Thank you, sir, <clears throat> for the introduction. Uh, very good afternoon to all the uh, SMEs, startups, uh, other members of the audience present. Uh, what I'm really going to talk about today is, uh, of course, a little bit about startups, but also about uh, SMEs trying to become or successfully becoming more startup-like organizations. And that's a trend that we have seen in the last uh, couple of years, uh, maybe two, three years or so. Uh, essentially, uh, I'm going to really talk about something that we have started calling within, at least within CIE. Uh, it's not a mainstream word uh, till now. Uh, in fact, we are doing some research on it and we'll be publishing it very soon. Uh, so we are calling this new category of SMEs, I mean, they are almost like a blended version of an SME and a startup. We are calling it high growth businesses. Uh, and in a way, these are very interesting businesses, uh, you know, uh, and maybe they also tackle some of the issues and challenges that we are talking about. Sir, you were talking about how to do cash flow based lending, uh, you know, how to kind of uh, assess the credit worthiness of, of such organizations. Uh, so, uh, now what is a high growth business uh, and how is it different than a startup and how is it different than an SME? Uh, 
uh, it is an it is more like an SME because it's typically manufacturing based. It could even be service based, but it's not like a very highly scalable startup. Uh, I mean, it's not a marketplace. It's not an e-commerce venture. It may have some elements of it. Uh, and I'll illustrate through that through the means of an example. Maybe I'll just quickly jump into the example to illustrate the point. There's a company, uh, uh, HGB or whatever SME that we supported called Bebe Foods. I mean, they, they are into jaggery manufacturing. Uh, so they started as a typical SME, which means they basically started doing uh, some organization within the, uh, within the domain of jaggery, packing, etc. And like a typical SME, once they had done some level of intervention, some quality improvement, some quality quantity enhancement, they started approaching dealers, distributors in Delhi. Uh, that you know, our product is good, you should keep it and you know, they were, did tie-ups here and there, etc. They put their stuff there. Uh, to cut a long story short, within one, and both of them were bankers, both the founders were bankers with about 10-12 years of experience and they were from Western UP where they could see that there's a lot of good quality jaggery getting produced but it's being sold as a commodity. So why don't we do some value addition there? Uh, so they did the traditional way. Uh, they did some value addition, improvement, packaging, etc. and went to dealers and distributors. Within one year they were close to shutting shop. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they kind of uh, did some odd jobs here and there, consulting, etc. Got, got some money uh, back and uh, were able to clear their uh, debts, etc. And then they restarted and that's the time we started uh, getting in touch with them. So they, there was a very typical SME behavior in the first phase of their business where they were not too concerned about customer acquisition, customer value creation, customer understanding what's the value they are creating for the customer. Just like startups mein kehte hai, doing pivots, right? Doing pivots, that means you do try out two, three things before you figure out what's working is a, is a key process through which you understand customer value proposition. Customer ko asli mein chahiye kya? Usko gud to mili rahe. So they then started on some what we call as lean startup methodologies. They started doing prototypes. They started doing experiments. They started looking at, okay, what are the various segments in the market? There can be an individual consumer. There can be a hotel. There can be a restaurant. Restaurant can also have various types of segments. There's a cafe. There's a QSR. There's a this, that, whatever. There are at least 15 to 20 types of restaurants. Right? Restaurant doesn't mean anything. Restaurant is a place where you get food. But, you know, there can be 20 different sub-segments sub of restaurants, each of them having different characteristics. So finally they arrived at you know, chai wali, chai point, chai, uh, you know, uh, all these T QSRs and they were able to convert some of their sachets, brown sugar sachets or white sugar sachets into jaggery sachets. I'm talking about six, seven years back. So these guys are actually the pioneers of packaging jaggery as sachets. And that's where value creation happened. Because immediately these, some of these cafes could see that our customers are jaggery for jaggery. They are 10% or 15% honge. It's an healthier option. Uh, right? I mean, uh, having uh, tea, uh, jaggery with tea is fine. Just in India, mein hai ki yaar summer mein jaggery nahi khani and all that. Uh, so what I'm really trying to say is that moving from an SME mindset, which is very back-end oriented, manufacturing oriented, aage distributor sara kaam karega, to a startup mindset where your fundamental process is discovery of the customer, where you take that risk, ki main ja ke customer se baat karunga, samjunga customer hack on, and then I'll try to figure out ki what's my product and how does the customer value proposition get met. Unhone kuch, baut kuch, aisa koi zabardast innovation nahi kiya, ultimately packaging wo kar di, usme thoda, you know, kya bolte hai, usko moisture kam kar diya, jisse wo jude na ya jo bhi hai, uh, just to make it more customer friendly from, uh, from a particular customer's perspective, which is all these chai cafes, tea cafes and all that. Uh, now these uh, businesses, what I'm calling as high growth SMEs or high growth businesses are very interesting uh, because they go through a couple of cycles, right? So shuru mein jo unka cycle hota hai, jahan pe wo customer value creation kar rahe hai, where they're trying to understand What's the product market fit, which we call which product is the customer for, which is the customer for. That's a slightly high risk phase. Uh, you know, and that's the time they will not have, uh, they may have a traditional sort of a cash flow coming, but it's almost like a new business that they are starting, where there is value creation. They are direct cap customer ko capture customer. They are not going through any intermediate, through any exporter, through any wholesaler. 
those are models in which the business gets squeezed kyunki aapka customer pe control nahi hai here the objective is to acquire the customer but that's a risky proposition so that's where incubators like us come in what we have realized is that a lot of the funding schemes that we have and i'm quickly going to talk about some of these uh, from department of science and technology from startup in, from invest india uh, we have collaborations with lot of uh, csrs which want to promote uh, entrepreneurship in specific sectors or promote social impact is case mein social impact hai you know the example that i gave because it's it's creating livelihoods for a lot of these small jaggery manufacturers spread all over the uh, hinterland of uh, western up uh, so wherever there is social impact etc we also have funds from csrs which we can invest in these kind of businesses and these businesses need not be startups in fact a lot of the funding that we do is not as equity we do it as a convertible debt so for example we gave them a convertible debt the logic of a convertible debt is that if they are able to come up with a business model which is uh, which is highly scalable and hgb can also become a startup which means ki unka bahut hi scalable business model hai manufacturing mein unko bahut kuch zyada karna nahi hai asset heavy nahi hai they are getting a lot of traction they are able to sell online etc matlab scale acha aa raha hai then we can convert that debt into equity and then maybe the, when a vc comes in we take an exit i mean that is how people make money through the equity route but if that doesn't happen and that's that's going to be the case as per our experience in 90% of the cases 90% cases mein kya hoga ki wo ek vc like business nahi banega it's not going to become a very highly scalable business it will become a profitable business 15 20 30 40 crore ka which will also create a lot of value which will also create employment which will also create social impact but they will be able to repay the debt over a 3 year 4 year sort of a period so these guys for example repaid our debt Uh, at at some 10 12 percent interest rate that that we were charging them, uh, so so therefore there it's like a blended finance. Uh, there are also models being tried out. I don't know whether India may ho raha hai ki nahi, you know uh, informally ho raha hai, which is revenue based funding. I mean almost like cash flow based funding where the uh, the uh, the buyback or the payback, sorry, is on the basis of revenues that you make. So there's an upside also there. We are also going to try it out with couple of uh startups which are making ceramic products there are a couple of startups in jaipur that we are going to try this out with so we are going to give them a debt but the payback is going to be on the basis of their cash flows so potentially we could earn a, a higher return there if their cash flows are high but we'll have some protection it should not be less than uh, 10% or something uh but it's flexible so if you in a particular month if your cash flows are low or in a particular quarter your cash flows are low Uh, your repayment and interest and all that gets adjusted and uh, gets gets kind of accumulated forward or something like that uh, so i think this is uh, uh, talking about some of the other schemes that we are doing so we have about uh, we have this uh, the funding program called startup india seed fund where we can do up to 50 lakhs of funding and it's sector agnostic right as long as the business is not a pure sme which means that they don't have control over the customer they don't know who their customer is they don't have a clear idea about their value proposition there's no path to uh, acquiring the customer ki ji hum beech mein ek intermediary exporter baitha hai usko maal bechenge i mean that is a no no business for us but as long as you are directly acquiring the customer it it doesn't matter if it's an uh, startup it doesn't matter if it's a asset heavy business we would be more than happy to explore funding i think we have as i mentioned there are a lot of manufacturing based businesses that we have uh, funded there's a there's a company called tractor and kisan based in uh, bais godam uh, again they also followed a similar trajectory they took equity from us convertible from us in their initial phases when they were high risk uh, you know they would not get debt they repaid it and they took debt of 3 4 crores after that to scale up and now they have franchises all over rajasthan to sell uh, you know some innovative farm implements that they are selling to to farmers etc uh, so i think that that is uh, one of the uh, things that i really wanted to talk about that you know it's it's probably important for a lot of smes uh, to move up this path uh, for two three reasons one is that because of the startup ecosystem because of mentors being there because of incubators like us uh, because of uh, you know angel investors venture capital etc of course angel investors venture capital are still focused on high tech startups 
but I, my sense is that over a period of time they will also start getting sensitized once once they see some examples of high growth businesses coming up uh, they'll also uh, kind of get sensitized so it's important for smes to try and move up the value chain come closer to the customer look at innovations in the business model uh, and try to become hgbs or high growth businesses uh, thank you very much that's the limited point that i wanted to make if there are any questions i'll be happy to interact thank you great bakshi sir really you have given a new things convertible debts into equity i think this is the most receivable finance which we are talking about the assets not assets based funding we are talking about the cash based funding now i'm coming to shri piyush dabriwal mish piyush dabriwal is head of statics partnership at dip capital and has around 10 years of experience in trade finance banking and financial services he has worked with barclay bank morgan stanley and co-founder of d2c fmcg startup to the right person also to talk about the trade financing and financial market financial services so because time is going up so i request to you mr dabriwal to be brief request mr dabriwal please come Hi everyone. Uh, I won't be taking too much time because I understand uh, we have a lovely lunch waiting outside. Uh, I was checking the schedule, so we are already behind that target. And as a startup, we always concentrate on target. So thank you, Mr. Gupta. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mukesh Kumar, uh, for bringing the topic of uh, SME finance, uh, cash flow based lending. Uh, away from the traditional uh, channels where an SME or MSME will be taking a loan to increase their business, right? Uh, so, especially what we have seen, fintech means basically financial technology. That is the uh, logic of, uh, that is the meaning of fintech, right? Uh, so, what we have seen is that COVID has given lot of growth to all these uh, fintech startup, and we all. we are also one of the leading fintech startups uh, in india so we help exporters uh, especially msme and uh, uh, sme exporters to grow in a very fast manner how do we do that i'll come to the slide later but let's uh, clear certain fundamentals right uh, so we have seen lot of demand across the world so i don't think uh, there would be any exporter or there would be any company who are looking for a buyer or who are looking for a uh, country where they can supply goods right so there are different startup also where you can easily identify buyers and grow your business right so uh, so business production is not an issue and then there was one panelist who was talking about uh, land uh, labor then the business itself right as a core so what we see in india especially finance is a very very big problem uh, when it comes to sme and msme right and how do we solve that uh, most of the sme people like my father is also a sme uh, manufacturer so he, even he doesn't have so much collateral or physical security to put it in the business and grow that business right so uh, most of us uh, like all of us are using smartphones right we uh, day in and day out we use uh, youtube facebook instagram right over there we get curated contents right 
according to your needs, what you are liking, right? So how are the companies giving you a curated content, right? They are analyzing your uh, data, they are seeing your viewing history, and on basis of that, they are giving you ads or they are giving you content which you might like, right? So data is very important in everyone's life. That is the biggest asset uh, one needs to take care of it. Uh, so, uh, uh, like everyone was saying that, please do your transaction in banking, through banks, through UPIs, so that as a startup we have some kind of traceability on that business, right? So we can verify that uh, transaction and basis of that transaction we can lend you, right? So we give you a collateral fee working capital uh, in a digital way. Uh, in a faster way. So just to uh, give some numbers uh, what we have done and how we have helped India to achieve its uh, growth target is basically we have financed more than 2.7 billion dollar uh, and working with more than 1500 exporters and uh, like we have various banking partners like ICIC Bank is one of the partners where we try to work with bank and try to help SME and MSME manufacturers to supply to give them extra working capital for their growth right uh, and uh, like Mr. Chintan was saying that uh, there are VCs, right, who typically fund a startup. So we are funded by uh, top tier VCs, uh, which have funded a lot of unicorns. So these are Excel, Sequoia, Y Combinator. So you can see uh, the investor who have funded Oyo Rooms also. So that are the investor which have uh, supported our company. Uh, so one thing is clear that 40% uh, of the exports uh, or the business are controlled by SME and MSME and 50% of that are services, right? So there are one category which uh, manufacture goods, physical merchandise goods, and there is a separate category which uh, gives services to other countries, right? So we try to cater to both of them. Uh, how do we do it? Uh, uh, let me give you by an example. Uh, this is called factoring, yeah, bill discounting in simple term, uh, but uh, usually banks can do that factoring part, but what we do is basically we do not take security. Without security, we are analyzing data and we are giving you finance. And how much finance? We give you up to 2.5 million dollar, which is around up to 20 crore at any point of time. So that is the amount of unsecured lending which we do and that too at a very competitive price. So we charge around 0.7 to 0.9% per month, right? So uh, what does this uh, diagram shows is basically if I'm a uh, manufacturer and exporter, uh, I typically ship my goods to US. So suppose I have one lakh dollar in my bank account and I use that one lakh dollar to make goods, right? And then I ship it to US which typically take 45 days to reach, uh, to reach US and after 45 days I might be receiving payment or there would be another extra credit period uh, which the buyer would be asking uh, for the payment, right? So typically we uh, see that any exporter waits for 30 to 60 days to get their payment back. In the meanwhile, suppose if, you, if there is one more order from a European buyer, right? Uh, what do we do, right? So we cannot wait for that 60 days uh, to get the money back and use that money, plow back that money into our uh, raw material procurement production, right? So t we say that when you have shipped the goods on day one, give that invoice or bill of lading to us within 24, 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, we will give you 80% of that. So once you submit that shipping bill or something, a basic uh, scanned copy of the document, we give you 80% of the invoice value on the very first day and the remaining 20% is given back to you once the buyer make a payment to us, right? So we give another 20% once we receive the money. So over here, what you can do is that you can internally churn your money and grow a lot. So I will jump to a, uh, like, uh, like, one of the last slide because uh, this is the very important slide uh, over here in our portfolio uh, we have seen such a massive growth uh, at our end right and this is not a cherry picked item where i have picked five six customer and tried to inflate the number ki chalo ye 5 6 increase kare 
and this is our growth trajectory. This is an average portfolio where our exporters are growing at the at this pace, 28 to 30 percent, as compared to a normal exporter, because. Uh, we give them like a faster solution. So uh, what, uh, like before the session, there was a point of turnaround time. Kit paisa kitna jaldi mil jata hai. Kitna less documents mein paisa mil sakta hai mein, right? So we try to cater to that fact uh, without taking too much uh, any documents. We try to process your loan. So in fact, we do not need your financials as well. So we have done so much API integration that for a public and private limited company, we do not need financial, no banking statement, nothing. It's just that one basic import export code number and the company name which we need to get your details, right? So we give a collateral fee, working capital, credit limit is $2.5 million, pricing is very less and the right side is about technology where we try to uh, disburse the money in a very fast way. Right. I won't be getting into the process, but uh, one thing is very sure and I can 100% vouch for it is the turnaround time. Like if you apply to us uh, today by giving the basic three details, we can fund you within six to seven days also. Right. So that is the faster, uh, fastest turnaround time which we take to disburse money. Right. Uh, and we, since we call ourselves FinTech, how do we use technology, right? So we use technology uh, for the document collection, like we use technology so that we have already pre-filled data for you. Uh, then we use technology to create certain uh, platform where you can track your shipment, track your invoices, do everything in a very simple way, right? Uh, to work with us, uh, it's basically uh, we want to help SME and MSME exporters, as simple as that. So if someone has done a basic uh, export, right, they have done 200k dollar of turnover in last 12 months or two BRC closures in last 12 months, this is good enough for us to work with you and to grow your business, right? Uh, this I've already talked. Uh, this is one of the customer uh, 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 He's into furnishing and wooden uh, and he's based out of Jaipur only. I cannot name that client in a public forum. Uh, but uh, what we have seen is that on year one, if you see on the green bar, uh, he was shipping 0.7 uh, million uh, on year one before drip was introduced, right? When drip introduced, when drip was introduced, we started doing 50% of their finance bill discounting. Then now it's more than 50%. So the green bar is also rising. Like if you see third year, that uh, exporter has done three times, uh, at least three times of business, what he was doing earlier before drip came into, right? Uh, these are the media article which gives a bit of comfort to you all and everyone that uh, we are not new into the industry and we are using a lot of technology to serve that uh, gap of SME credit, right? Where you might not be having a lot of documentation or a, uh, or proper records what a banking uh, or a structured financial institution needs, but we try to leverage data and play upon that to give you finance in a very seamless way so that you grow your business. So that's it from my end. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, I will be happy sir, to answer. Uh, thank you, Payush. I think for you, there are so many questions in my mind also, with the audience also, because you are helping about 80 percent, 20 percent, whether you are doing with records, without records. There are so many questions. We will ask you later on. So I'm coming to S. B. J. Kumar. He is the right person to ask your all questions because he deals with the finance. DGM Circle Credit Officer, State Bank of India. Shri S. B. J. Kumar joined State Bank of India as Provisioning Officer in August 1992. In his service period of 30 years, he has been completed many SME related assignments. He was AGM SME at Credit Center in Lucknow. Then he was AGM in commercial branch, Tarvendram. Once promoted to DGM, he headed commercial branch, Tripur as DGM. He also been headed Udaipur model as DGM. At central level, he has been DGM SME of Jaipur Circle, which cover SME, business of entire Rajasthan state, 
Presently, he is a DGM and Circle Credit Officer at Jaipur Head Office. I think he will be the right person. Whatever question in our